to do the osmosis in potatoes lab, you will need 25 small pieces of potato. These were cut out using a cork borer, but you can just dice them into small squares also. A container, a digital scale, and your five different sucrose solutions. Start by weighing out five of the small pieces of potato on the digital scale. Repeat this for the next five. Sorry. Repeat this for the next four of the solutions. Five percent, ten percent, fifteen percent, and the twenty percent sucrose solution. you add the solution and then you are done for this part of the lab. Reach into equilibrium, then record your particular mass. Don't forget the units. Put the five pieces of potato in the appropriate label container and then For part two of the lab, you will need your initial data, a scale, and your five solutions with the potato pieces in. To start, you will choose one of the solutions, we're going to start with the 20%, and we'll carefully pour out the solution. We don't want any of our potato pieces to end up in the sink. Then we'll put our potato pieces on a paper top. We only want to weigh the potato pieces, not any of the water. So we'll pat them dry. And that one's not completely dry yet. So we'll just try to get rid of the excess water. And then we will weigh them. This was our 20% and we see that it has stayed the same. We'll put these back into the cup just in case we need to weigh them again later. Maybe somebody in our group wasn't paying attention, didn't get the weights, or something happens to our paper. Now we're going to do the 15%. And again, we'll pat them dry because we don't want to weigh the water weight. We'll continue this with our other three, and when we are all done, the potatoes will go in the trash, and we will rinse out the cups and dry them out so that another class can use them. Calculating percent change in mass will require a calculator. You also need to know your final and initial masses of the potatoes. To calculate the percent change in mass, you will take the final mass and subtract the beginning, and then divide that by the initial mass. For instance, we will take 1.6 minus 1.5. That gives us 0.1. Divide it by the initial mass, which was 1.5. When we multiply this times 100, we now have a 6.7% change, which we will record right here. When we have no change from beginning to end, then we know that 1.6 minus 1.6 is zero. We really don't have to do a calculation if there is no change. So we see for our 5%, 15 and 20%, there's no change in the final mass.
For our 10% solution, we start off with 1.6, but it dropped to 1.5. So our final 1.5 minus the starting mass, which is 1.6, gives us a negative number. This means that it lost mass. When we divide that by our starting mass, 1.6, and then multiply by 100, we have a decrease of 6.3%. So a negative 6.3%. It is the percent change in mass that you will be graphing over the solutions. So your graphing will need to include a negative number. So you might want to put your zero point about halfway on your graphing paper and then move down, this will be your negative side, move down by an appropriate scale. Since I have to go down to negative six, maybe I'll make this negative one percent, negative two percent, Negative three going percent. up should be the same. So every two blocks is a percent. And of course, at the bottom, we will have our various percentages. So zero percent sucrose here, and then we'll have an appropriate scale one, two, three, four. 5% sucrose here. One, two. Once I have all my dots graphed, now I can connect them with a line of best fit. Now after my 10%, we see it has a downward trend, but then it goes back up to zero. This is likely an error in the lab setup. Maybe I didn't put enough solution on top of the potatoes, or something else happened. But we know that a high percentage of solute means that water should osmose out of the cell. And so we would have expected our trend to continue downward. So we'll just leave this as it is. That's our line of best fit. And we'll use this to answer our analysis.